the weather forecast doesn't look too encouraging, but well, toward the end of May, and we decide to make the trip down to southeast Oregon. The first thing we'll do is see if we can find some sunstones in the Denial Sunstone area. It's about 50 miles out of Denial, and it looks like they're showing up really good today. These are really nice stone, and they make really good jewelry when they're faceted into a ring or something else. They're known as the Oregon Diamond, and they're also the gemstone of the state of Oregon. You find them scattered along the ground. The winter frosts and freezes seem to raise them, and then the rain washes them off. So we're finding quite a few of them this morning. It's a little better to hunt them when the sun is out because they glisten in the sunshine and show up a little better. But you can still find them when it's wet and rainy like it is today. And there's a cool breeze blowing but we're dressed for it, so we're doing just fine. They range in size from quite small to quite large, and so I suppose the larger ones are a little better. Maybe you could make two facets out of one of them. After we finish with the sunstone area, we decide to go do a little bit of exploring. We find a bird's nest out near Whitehorse Hot Springs and another bird's nest. I think it's probably a raven and lots and lots of swallow nests, but there were no birds around. I guess maybe the weather's just a little too bad for them right now. The softer stone of the under part of this cliff erodes away very easily and is makes an excellent spot for birds to nest. From Willow Creek we go over to Little White Horse Creek and find it's rain swollen and also the beaver dams have pretty much all washed out in White Horse Creek too. And then to Willow Creek or White Horse Hot Springs and the water is nice and hot as the sun sets majestically over the desert. The BLM has furnished a picnic table, but it looks to me like we're using it for a clothesline to dry our wet clothing. The snow level is creeping its way down on the Trout Creek Hills and also on the Steens Mountains and the Pueblos. A little cottontail rabbit is sitting motionless under some sagebrush, relying on his camouflage to keep him from being seen. But I can see that little eye looking at me. A beetle has become a victim of one of the mud holes, but he's able to backstroke himself, clear out of there and right himself and go on. There are mud holes everywhere, and this is supposed to be the desert. But the sun sets are second to none this year. There were periods of brief clearing and a little bit of sunshine, and then usually by sunset the weather would clear off to give us a spectacular sunset. All the rains of this year have proved to be really beneficial to all the wildflowers. The little daisies gently wave in the breeze with some drips of water on them, and the larkspur are blooming their heads off. And some of the death camas have stuck their single spike of flowers skyward. The sun sets just about like this every evening over Willow Creek right by where we're camped and the water is flowing over a washed out beaver dam. 
One of the beaver dams didn't have to worry about being washed out. The beavers seemed to take care of it. They kept rebuilding it as it would try to wash out. So the water was just flowing around it. And this provides a home for numerous ducks and other creatures. They swim across the beaver pond where the water isn't running so swift through as the sun majestically tucks its head down behind the hills. Every evening when we'd see a sunset like this, we'd think, well in the morning it's going to be clear and nice, but in every case that wasn't so. The, some of the mornings we'd wake up to snow, and the snow is hitting right down on my Honda and making it white. I forgot to bring the cover for the Honda and it looks like I'm paying the price. Even our car got a liberal coating of snow as well as our trailer. But the hot springs were very nice and it's pretty nice just to sit in the hot springs and watch that snow fall down and melt right in the spring. It's almost the first of June, but yet the snow continues to fall. It's even got the brim of my hat coated with that white stuff. Every day there was time enough for a hike and sometimes it started out with kind of good weather and it would deteriorate later. We found this old homestead ruins and Chip is posing with one of the agates he found. He's going to take this agate home with him and it's a... After a few days around the White Horse Desert, we decide to go over and check out the Steens Mountains and the Albert Hot Springs area. The Albert Desert was covered with water from one end to the other. It was a total lake where it should be a dry lake bed. But on the hillsides, the wild flowers were blooming in abundance. The Indian paintbrush were giving some color to the desert floor. And the arrow leaf balsa root were blooming nice as well as the daisies on the desert floor. I decided to drive up the little road and take a look at the lupin that are blooming up above the desert. These lupin are a very rare variety of colored lupin. They're yellows and pinks and light blues and whites. They're only in this area. It's about the only place in the world. There's a belt of them that goes up through about three states and we drove up the road thinking it would be all right as usual it's usually good and hard but when we got up a ways we found it was anything but hard the lupin are blooming their heads off right below the stormy steens mountains and we're taking a photo op even though it's threatening rain. I've never seen so many lupin blooming so good. And usually we miss them. Although certain years we run into them. But it's always about a month earlier. We drove up the road to take pictures of them. Where we very easily could have walked. But we chose to drove up, drive up. And that wasn't necessarily the greatest idea. It was just a little bit muddy and I got sort of stuck a little bit. We managed to get free of the mud and go on. From the muddy road area, we're going to head on. The only problem I had when we got out on the highway my car was going thump, 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 
and just vibrating something terrible. And I guess what happened is some of that mud got between the wheel and the brake shoes and was throwing the tire way out of balance. So I found a little stick and poked the mud out and then things worked real good again. The only thing, I guess I'm going to have a really nice job of washing the car to get all this mud off, but there's probably enough mud to start a garden. So from the lupin, we carefully move our way down to the main road, and then we're going to head for home. On the way, we stop at the ruins of an old stage stop, and then on home. subscribers really bad on this channel so if you could I'd certainly appreciate it if you would subscribe and thank you for watching and this is all for right now